Hey guys, <laughs> moving right along, I just finished the steering wheel and uh, we got the radiator all welded up. That's the new piece for the bottom. The half inch taken out. Um, you can see this is the, uh, the filler. I had to nip that back. So now I'm just gonna go up and, and basically clean anything that's not flush, right? A little nub there, but just clean it so that uh, she can mount nice and flat. But that was a success, a huge success. So now, now that guy will go in. That's gonna, that half inch, it's a total of a half of an inch uh, removed is gonna give me the uh, opportunity to adjust my grill a little bit and not have the radiator interfere with it. So very, very happy. So, moving right along. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, we're continuing on with the front end that's been off and on. Um, I took and I finished blocking the, uh, got a little, little bit of a gap there. This is not a gap. That's where I cut through the, the top gel coat of the fiberglass um, radiators in now I have to build a, a cage around the radiator and I'll show you that in a minute but right now I welded um, these are attached with five screws all the way down here and what I did was I wanted to pinch nice and flat I didn't want of course the bolts to pull through so I copied the shape to a piece of 12 gauge plasma cut out the 12 gauge pieces and welded the heads of bolts. Kind of hard to see, but here you can see the spot welds right there. Okay, and uh, getting them in was a bit of a challenge because you're going up underneath here and then in. Got a chip in it. So I got that built and then I quick rolled up a pan to fill this area direct the airflow up. You don't want that open. It looks goofy. But I also needed a place to mount my horn. So that's the pan underneath there. And that's the horn mounted to the pan. It's an Auga horn. Now this is definitely not going to stay like that. I just uh, put the hole in it. I might do a carriage bolt or something like that going down through the button, you know, in the middle in the middle of that uh, arrangement there um, so that right, right now I gotta probably do four bolts uh, there'll be just sheet metal bolts it's all I need for the, uh, this pan um, self tappers I guess and then they'll they'll go into there so then what becomes the next project is now I can't I can't put the fan on the inside. I got to go to a pusher instead of a puller. So I got to pull this shroud off. Um, and that, that'll give me three quarters of an inch. But you know, the spacing is, you can see it at the front of the bolts. You know, it's not, and then I gain this three quarters of an inch here. So anyway, where that mounts down there and up here, I'm going to run a tube down to the radiator mount. So I'm getting the radiator positioned exactly where it needs to be. Then I'll run some square tubing up. And I'll, I'll leave some relief and adjust it with uh, fender shims or washers or whatever. You know, so that I can have some movement. And that carriage will go around. Um, or it'll go up. It'll come up. And I'll, I don't know. If, if I do something around, I'll do a, some sort of a cut something a little more decorative and then I'll tie in I marked here and here where the top of the hood side will be and then I'll weld in a, or I mean I'll bolt in I'll make a bolt in bar that goes across here and a carriage bolt in here you can see it looks like that was up here 
and you know frankly speaking I probably could use that because it'll hide the heads of the carriage bolt but I, I was looking along the lines of something that I could carry um, my hood sides they would go down to and I would do a bend in a bend and they would just set in there so I don't I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do at this point I'm not gonna run my hood sides up that high you know I'm gonna run the hood down and I'll bead roll this I'll have to you know put in a piece and then I'll bead roll across there and that's what I lined up with you know and that that bead will probably just die somewhere in the hood to a point or something like that so that's how that's that's how that's gonna wind up being and so I've had these on and off and on and off the interesting thing is it's going together much more smoothly when you got things bolted up and you leave it bolt it up as long as you can um, it's it starts to come back so it's starting to take shape pretty good you know I just got about right now about three-eighths of an inch between those two ends so 316 so you just got to do a little twist and that'll come right out when I did the steering wheel and got that all mounted up I had the because these are all double D it's all double D shaft added 180 degrees out of rotation so that took a little bit this morning to pull everything off of this side pull the steering down and what rotated 180 and bolt it all back up but but that's done now too so did some radiator hole i got the bottom hose made it's a silverado truck hose uh, but that's cut the top when i use the silverado hose but i cut too much of it and it junk now and basically go to a, a pick and pull and grab the hoses and and determine what you can use then you can take that profile if you need brand new hoses or if you're going to go get brand new hoses uh if they're good you know if you get it from a 2019 2020 or 20 you know something like that <laughs> like i did um then they're they're you know it's their rollovers and wrecks and so i wound up getting some really good hoses but i wrecked the the top one trying to make it i cut it too short and then you're done so anyway um that's what I got going, and and uh, everything's everything's uh, seems to be going relatively smoothly. That that took a bit of a challenge because it has to come under this lip down there, then go up, and then come up here. So I'm exposing the bolts so you have access to them down along here. I'll probably do something along the lines of a either a, a silicone or it's it's got enough pressure in there, but something that it's not going to make noise and you can just get it out uh i don't want to bolt through the fiberglass on the bottom uh too much uh too much stuff bolted into the edges and that bottom lip is not as thick as the sides these are really beefy sides because of the the bolt you know the way they the way they're assembled so that's what i got i see it popped up i just got it underneath the weld beads right there but once I get it on, it's got a nice little, very minor amount of pressure, so it's, it fits in there really good. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great one. Talk to you soon. Hey, guys, just a small snippet here. I did finish up. Uh, you can see I filled the hole where the where the where uh, I had that horn screw in because I use it as a plug weld um, to mount the horn. So I've got all that in. Uh, mounted across the top I just rolled a little little hole here to not chafe that that's for the um, fan and then underneath what I did was take and I plug welded a, a bracket across the top ro rolling around the horn and now I've got a nice tight horn mount and then I quickly wired in wired in the horn so I'll do a quick test and probably need to <coughs> excuse me spray bomb that black or something because from the don't know if you'll see it with the wheels but from the passenger side I do not want to see a red horn but it'll probably be behind the wheel but she sits up good car is above ride height and you can't you can't see the horn 
So even crouching down low. So coming along. Thanks. Well, here we are again. Tore it all down. Got everything centered and got the radiator centered in the shell where I wanted it to be and and uh, tightened down, cinched down the bolts. And then I started on one side, taking the two bolts out and fabricating the frame for the radiator mount. These ears were originally on the shroud and they step out. So this one is, you can see I'm on the inside of a piece of three quarter inch C channel. I'm on the inside, but I had to, had to slot it. And on the bottom, I'm on the outside. So what I basically did was build two towers, right? And I put weld nuts in there on the back side. This one bolts in this way. This one bolts in that way. Okay. Using the original holes. And then I came down and fabricated a, a base for it. Welded on the C-channel. I stepped it an eighth of an inch to go over the top of the aluminum on the radiator flange, mounting flange. Did the same thing on this side. This is a bit of a pickle because you got a power steering hose under, a power steering hose over. I had to narrow it to get the hoses through. Of course, I got the power steering sector and I had to get around all that stuff. So this one is fabbed a little bit different than the other side. Instead of sitting on the tower, it's very hard to see, but it turns and slopes down to clear those lines on that side. But believe it or not, in that tight spot, right there, with that ramp on it, I loosen those three bolts. This goes in from the engine side, but because this is bolts on from the inside out, I can loosen those bolts, clock it, and then pull the whole thing out. So it is still serviceable. I was sweating on that side. I did that one second for that very reason that I needed to concentrate on how I'm gonna get that bracket in. But it does come in and out. <clears throat> Pulling it out from the front would have been an option with exception to that. So I focused on with the bottom mount. So I focused on, on that. And with the eighth inch C channel for the, for the fan, I got two pieces of three sixteenths, three quarter, three sixteenths, just strap iron or flat bar. And I just put them in the brake, 85 and a half. Or 85 degrees, 85 degrees. So they're not in con the tapes there, but they're not in contact with the radiator. But they slope out and come flush with the with the two side outside sides. I, I wanted to get them as narrow as possible to wrap around that corner, so I have absolutely no problems putting the shell on the grill shell on. So I'm wrapping for the day, but I've got to obviously fab the top one. Uh, I've already bent it up, I guess. It's it's sitting right there on the bench. I, I haven't drilled any holes in it or anything yet. Um, but it's going together very well. I can measure from the top of that bar down, from the uh, radiator uh, cross member up. Everything, everything is coming in good, square, and straight. So... Uh, very happy with that, considering the amount of work and fabrication of this. You know, everything sitting there except for the radiator and the fan is fabbed up uh, to fit in a very tight, very, very tight spot. But it turned out well. Um, I got, you know, looking at it now, I said, wow, you can almost, almost get a fan on there now, huh? But... As it sits now, I need to finish that up. Decide what I'm going to do for the top hat. And again, i got to stay right on top of this. I did shorten it to half an inch, if you remember. But um, 
it I have more clearance on this side because it's sitting back, but I want to stay nice and close. So uh, don't exactly know where I'm headed with that yet, but uh, uh, think got a few ideas. Okay, and then and then after that's done, bolt it all on, and um, make the mounts for the the strut rods that will actually also align the the radiator shell because it's fiber oh, and hold it because it's fiberglass of course, but you got to hold it at the top. So going well and uh, having fun. Hey guys, so now I'm got that mounted. I got my brackets for the radiator fan mounted interestingly I had to relieve both the brackets to hold the fan but all the better so uh, keeps everything centered up so that and that worked out well so now this ugly mess here now I'm I'm working to address so I drew a profile of the um, radiator and this is drops down three quarters of an inch this is for the front but I want to put um, an L channel on it I want to be very close to the top of the radiator so I I made a cardboard cutout okay folded it in half and even though I folded it in half it wasn't it wasn't perfect but it got me where I needed to start and that's where I kind of thought, hey, I should just do a quick video. So, so I've gotten to the point of starting to bend it and all that stuff. But I cut it out with the plasma, uh, bigger than it's supposed to be, bigger than the cardboard. And then I, I took and I, um, and then and I uh, ground ground the edges. But one thing is, when you try to establish symmetry, folding a piece of paper in half works, but you could be off a little bit. So what I did was I took. Um, the piece and I traced it entirely on the table you can see a hint of it before you can just use brake clean wipe it off but traced it on the table and then marked what I believe to be center and then I I uh, would take and Put the piece down before I did any bending, flip it over, and then I identified where it was not totally symmetrical, right? So then I would mark. You can only, you know, you can add material by welding, but you can only really remove material uh, when you're trying to establish a shape. So, so basically, what I did is I kept, I found the area where the red line was underneath the material. I marked it uh, and um, and ground it, and just kept working back and forth break clean over the table, retrace, flip it over until I got an exact shape. So, and that's what I have here is an exact shape. Now I started rolling this so I, unfortunately if I, if I stick it on there, you know, it's, it's sitting up, but it is bent a little bit. Um, see, I rolled the two edges a little bit and I'll show you that in a minute. The other thing is when you do that line, you mark center on your piece, you mark center in here. And if it shifts from side from from your center line to this side, you're not there. Go in between those two marks, make a new line on here, break clean, clean it off, and then keep flipping it over and you will find a very exacting uh, piece. So now what I'm doing is I'm establishing a point to to where I want this to, um, this is going to be hard to do with one hand, where I want this to marry up. So this will marry up with this side. It'll come up and around and marry up with this side. I'll probably carry that taper into this, you know, so this will be chamfered down a little bit. And then I'm going to, this is inch and a half. And then I'm going to band this whole thing with inch and a half. And the thing is, I'll probably attach it through the top. So whether I do a, a break in there for it flat on the top or continue on down, I will need a method of fastening it in. So that's where I'm at now. I just took that and then I got 
took the plasma out and just cut a piece of steel on the plasma. You can still see some bluing from the plasma. Cleaned out the edges. And now I'll begin to put that up, uh, this on there. And basically these, these bends allow it to come out, step out. If you remember, they're going to step out. And so that inch and a half band will curve in with that piece to more like one inch over the top and then step back out to an inch and a half. So it'll look like a form piece when it's done, but it also look like it's supposed to be there. So again, I, I don't necessarily like the 90 here, so I might continue that down. Then I'll just simply, that'll cap on and I'll weld in a, a piece of 3 16 or something that has enough beef to thread and, and fasten uh, a bolt down. <laughs> And then that cap will come off. Each one of those comes off, and this whole thing will be disassemblable. So that's the, that's the plan, and uh, I got to run, but uh, still working on it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, uh, watch me get this thing put together. Thanks. Okay, guys, it's the next day now, and uh, I cut my two pieces out. That top piece that I showed you. Or, pardon me, this piece that I showed you in the last video. And then I just cut out an inch and a half ribbon and uh, tack welded it on the back to follow a profile. So, so that, uh, to follow the profile of the piece, the first piece that I made. And I just welded it up and ground it, basically. So now, the plan is to... to uh, put it onto the radiator and then marry that piece there and that piece there like so okay and then I'm going to bolt down through here and I'm, I'm very close but I'm still not touching there or there, but I think I can take that up with the bolts. And interestingly, I am one material thickness shy. This is an inch and a half. And when I assembled this, my intentions were to stay one material thickness back and then have a inside corner basically to weld. As I did it this morning, waking up, coming out, and excitingly did it, I assembled it on the table face down and then I my plan was to put it face down touch this side touch this side because they curve out um, and tack it on the inside and then proceed in cutting out this material so I missed the uh, one material thickness and I'll come up with a creative way to address that probably come out here and down yeah you know that'll be in the end just to get it looking like it's supposed to be there. Like it's this isn't supposed to hang out. <laughs> but in any event, I got a gap all the way around, like I was looking for. Um, it comes close on the top, but there's a gap. It's not touching the front of the radiator. It's out from the weld. So the plan is after this is all painted, I will foam both sides of these and then and then bolt it in. So, um, I'm a little long on the end still. So when I bolt it down, then I'll very carefully flush that with the ends. And then, of course, when that's disassembled and reassembled, you'll have visual cues, you know, um, what do you call those, um, where you don't think about it, subliminal cues that, oh, okay, it goes here and here and here. So, that's the plan. And... Uh, and I'm sticking to it. So at this point now I gotta tack weld in my my knots. <laughs> uh, anyway, into here, get my two holes um, uh, located, and then tack it in, then pull each of these posts out. And I'll probably just do that one at a time. Weld the the nuts in and uh, start wrapping up this this piece of the project. More later. 
Hey guys. Okay, so we have, you know, I walk around and I've lost my piece. It's over here. So I got this piece done, got the holes drilled. Um, some people wonder how, how it's, it's not done. I have to flare out the, in this, in this view, the right side. I, I made a mark where, where the uh, bracket is, but I need to get that material thickness in there. So I got to make a decision and, um, got the holes open. Now, now I typically oversize, um, my holes for some adjustment. And my rule of thumb is uh, uh, one uh, sixteenth larger. So if I'm using, in this case, this most of this assembly here is all quarter inch bolts. Okay, so my through holes are typically five sixteenths. Um, I say typically because there are some case, cases where you want close tolerance. When you go buy a washer at the hardware store, just a, a general uh, grade five washer, even grade two washer, for a quarter inch bolt, it's a 5 16 hole. And they're sloppy on there. But the nice thing about that is they're all one size, one bolt size larger, is that if you want a tighter tolerance washer um, for a quarter inch bolt, then you buy some 3 16 washers because they'll have a quarter inch hole. And they fit on perfectly um, there are SAE applications and uh, you know there are washer grades and applications obviously that change that but generally speaking if you're just doing fab and you want to get a good uh, finish look I typically get to SAE washers and like if for a quarter inch bolt that's a grade 8 SAE I'll use that by comparison uh, this is it's a little bent but that's a quarter inch washer for uh, grade two or grade five, you know, that I use for mock-up and stuff like that. <clears throat> now, back to the show. We know from the last video uh, that I'm attaching to the ends. I did cut both ends while it was in the vehicle. Covered everything up with my weld uh, bibs. Um, but I cut both sides, and then I have now since removed that side and welded in the top hat for this with the with weld nuts and i used weld nuts and in this case i'm using two quarter inch bolts because i don't want any shift and turn but it's a little tiny piece those are quarter inch bolts in there guys and you can see that i will use very small washers and i have two weld nuts that I've trimmed down to fit. I cut a bead in the middle. It is not perimeter welded yet. When I put it in, I welded both sides. So I, I put a chamfer on, actually on the C-channel. I put a chamfer on it all the way around the C-channel. So I have a V in there, okay? And then I slowly and carefully weld this all up and being cognizant of what the side is. But I, I stick this piece in with a magnet, a weld magnet, to hold it flush with the surface. And then I tack it four spots. And then I finish weld this side. Okay. Then I flip it over and I weld the inside. And I put this on, and I thought, God, I should get a video, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get in there. Maybe I can focus on it. And it's a little difficult to see the weld, actually. But I've fully welded on the inside around the perimeter. So I've essentially fastened these two layers of material to the interior side of this. So next move is then to do the same operation on this side. And then I still do want to flare that out. I don't want this exposed. I want it covered like this is all the way around. So, uh, last bit. Um, these are quarter inch holes. We know a bolt, you know, if you measure a threaded bolt, the, 
The OD is about what, 23, 24, 0.23, 0.24, you know, because the threads take some diameter off of that quarter inch shaft right there after it's threaded. So I use quarter inch holes all the way through for mock up, including that piece. Okay, so I mock everything up with the tightest possible tolerances I can achieve. Um, and, and then I finish the entire assembly, and then I go and I open those holes up to 5 sixteenths and those holes and all that. So I do my pre-assembly all on the quarter inch and mock-up, and I'm done with the mock-up. I know exactly where this goes and all that now. And then I open the holes up. So, so everything fits as it should, and I've got a little bit of tolerance, you know, because you can stack, once you start putting all this stuff together, things can move just a little bit. And so I don't want to fight it assembling it, but I want it as close and tight as, as possible. So that's the story, and I will continue on. Thanks. Okay, guys, there it is, the final view. Bolted up. I opted out of adding material to this. What I did was I centered this on that rail, and then I just dressed it all the way around so it ties in. Um, same thing on this side. I have, I have space between the rad and this, so I'll put foam in there. It tightens the schnockies out of it. I still have my gap across the top. So that is the final view. Everything's held together tight. Uh, it looks it looks really good. I'm very very happy with it. Lines up with the tower. Now when um, I put these braces on to go across. Um, they will attach to this as well as the grill shell, but of course the grill shell will have to have some adjustment in it to make sure that my hood, let me shrink this, to make sure that my hood dimensions are exacting, or you can adjust the gaps, those kinds of things. But, um, boy, coming along great. Now I gotta start putting all the pieces back on the thing. You know, I have a very limited movement, you know, I not maybe a quarter of an inch. So when I build those rods, you know, again, I talked earlier about the holes. I can loosen that up a little bit and I can get a little bit of movement back and forth. But, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been measuring as I go. So, <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, Need to get those either powder coated or painted everything if i do powder coat i'm going to rip the bottom one along with and blast it maybe even grab these and and get them because those get hit constantly with rocks and debris on on these old cars you know they get no matter what you do uh they're going to be bare metal soon as you drive it but we got her on thanks guys Oh my, oh my. So so everything's on the front as covered in the last, other than the mounts. The mounts. So here, now I had to get these straps out of the way of, uh, they, were, they were here and I wanna attach to here because I wanna get a taper head into here so that the sheet metal can sit right over the top of that. <clears throat> kind of like original, but not really. It probably was a button head, you know, or a carriage style bolt. Anyway, so now I've got that positioned. I'm, uh, I'm measuring from where the top of the rail is going to go to the, where the top of the rail is going to go. These lines. That's the rail that's going across here. It holds the side of the engine, the side cover. Then the hood will be formed around that. I originally started here at the bottom, but I'm going to be up here 
because the bead is going to be in the hood. So the bead will overlap. This is like an inch and a eighth, inch and a quarter. Um, this is one inch. So the rail is C channel, just like the front. This will be turned to the inside and the flat side of the C channel. So the hood will come up, or the hood side rather, will come up and be formed around so it sits down onto that channel. And like I did on that 37 over there, I put two pins in the rail, holes in the, in the, in the top side, and then you just slide it down and that's what holds it all, all in. You can foam the back side of it, that kind of stuff, so you don't scratch the paint and all that. Anyway, so I've identified, you know, because now I've got a lot of noise in here. There's bolts going in here, there's bolts going in here, so I got space down below. So I'm coming into there. And to do that, I have the evolution of humankind here. Cardboard to evolves to a, a basic uh, shape, in this case bent, and then to a final bracket. So basically, made myself a cardboard profile where I wanted to grab the top, have some space, and then have a mounting flange for that piece of channel that goes over, okay? So that, I chose to, here, I wanna, I wanna make a pad up here, so that's a bend, and I wanna strengthen this, and I wanna use quarter inch material, so I'm gonna put another bend in. And that evolved this, this is the mirror image, you know, this is that. So then I went and, bent these over, welded them together, and ground it. So then I had a working platform for, for getting started with this. Okay, this side, oh, this goes up. Oh, this goes up here, up there in that location. I got my clearance. I can grab my my uh, grill shell and then it'll mount onto here. Holes are not drilled into there. I got them started into this piece, but they're not drilled in yet. Because I'll mock this into there when I drill the holes. And then that evolves to this. So that's the mirror image. I actually need to step out from that frame because I want this piece where this will weld to to be to be this piece is integral to the frame so you would stick it in you would introduce it in and it'll bolt on here and here and if there's any adjustment fore and aft you could use fender washers here or here, you know, for spacing, incremental spacing. Right now, I'm going to get them the same by, by keeping that bracing in, get this distance the same. Adjusting the shell side to side. Very limited, very limited, but if you need to adjust side to side or if you need to do any of that, um, you know, right now, I'm obviously, I'm... I'm on jacks, I'm shimmed, I'm level, you know, all that. But once he's sitting down on the ground, if there's any adjustment, I can adjust at the bottom. I can adjust this distance up here. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, and that will move the shell along with. So, and I can adjust one side, or, or the, it's different from the other, so I can do that. So all within, you know, limited, a quarter of an inch, you know, maybe max per side, 316, something like that, max per side. But you can dial it in. So the evolution went to this because as I was, as I was working uh, toward the solution, let's see here, let's get this in, yeah, this is mirror image fashion. So that's where the, the, 
square tube will weld like this on the same side this will mount you can notice I took the flag off and moved this in I may be doing the same here I don't know but I fabbed this whole deal up then I had to bring it taper it back so I could get this to the outside of the shell outside of the grill shell right and this to the inside of the grill shell when it tucks in there weld nut for the grill shell for the grill shell and then two quarter inch bolts and spaced three quarters of an inch in this case that I needed because I had a break in it I needed to taper that up keep this straight because it mounts to that the radiator the radiator uh, the C channel holding the radiator it mounts to that surface right there so this goes on the two bolts hold it straight up a little bit of adjustment these are 5 16 holes on two quarter inch bolts a little bit of adjustment but assemble you can tighten this run that in and uh and then bolt on this side so it's coming together but it's certainly evolved as i go because i'm thinking about what what's going to happen how do i need how do i make it adjustable how do i Make sure it's strong enough to hold and not bend. Certainly if this was just, if I had that C-channel on here, this is holding the shell up there, vibration would have obviously allowed that, that bend. You know, this could move around and certainly vibrate and all that. So now I'm, I'm pretty confident that that's a little over-designed, but it's, um, it's going to be strong enough. Okay, and thinking, well, is that, uh, that's a piece of tubing. You should weld two tubes in there. That's a 3 16 uh, square, uh, square tube. On this side, of course, it's welded to an eighth inch plate. So, so there's a, a, a pile of material here, over a quarter of an inch material, 3 16 right? Plus an eighth. So 5 8, uh, you, you know, you do the math, 7 16 I don't know what it is. I have no idea, but it's thick. And then on this side, 3 16 you're not going to crush that. I capped the end, and, and it ain't going anywhere. So that's how it's evolving. Thanks, guys. All righty. That side's on. That side's on. Now it's time to run from here to there. I'm still deciding if I want to weld to this or bolt to this. <clears throat> Clearly, I'm going to bolt to this. And of course, you have to, for fitment, you know, you don't. I'm thinking maybe studs going in and then nut it on the inside and introduce this side over to it. But. It's just, it gets a little complicated, a little mind-boggling. But these two here, you know, they're nutted on this side. When I pull this all out of here for paint, I'm going to weld the nuts onto the other side. Or or use, use weld nuts. Got a couple of different styles that I've used. I've used this style. You know, just chop it because you got a lot of thread. You know, that's more than any quarter inch nut. It's threaded through and through. And of course, your standard run of the mill, you know, weld nuts. So I got them in quarter to three eighths, basically. But um, that, then this will bolt into that way, and it, it you know it's a more finished look than having a nut hang out, not mounting anything on there. But anyway, um, uh, that's the plan. Moving forward to this. Well, here we are again. Got them in. 
got them in and they came in and worked out great. My, uh, my son came over with his daughter and we had a spectacular time. Um, we were able to fab up, weld in, finish welding. Uh, sorry about that to those front braces. So those are all in both sides tied right on the center line that red mark built these brackets penetrated the firewall and now we can screw to each one of these and the purpose for this bracket then is to allow for uh, any adjustment necessary to achieve gaps so if I do need to shim, I would shim in here. I mean, I could shim here or in here. But um, I could also shim the front, but I'm, I'm grabbing the, the shell, the grill shell at that point. So that would make, make it a little more complicated. But I wanted some adjustment. I wanted it to look engineered. And, uh, and it turned out really well. Now, the hoods, this is the top of the hood side. So this will set down on the fender and construct that, that hood side. So um, that, that's another part of the fabrication we need to do. But while he was here, like you gotta put a strap around fiberglass to get it to take shape. But now we're working on the rear, rear fenders. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try, I did, I did mock mount these. But what I want to do is accomplish a fender width that I can have without having contact. So I'm going to maximize the width of the fender, but not have contact with the door, obviously. So that's kind of one of the problems with the sedans is the ability to widen that out to get as wide of a tire. And of course, I you know, could have taken the opportunity to fill in that one inch space down there it would have accomplished some but i didn't think it was worth all of the effort involved to do that to get that right up against the frame hindsight's 2020 but um this is what i have so far with it sitting and it does have contact it's not probably not perfectly level but um so far this would have overlapped that you know that that inch so so far I'm, you know this is nothing's perfect right now but this is about an inch and a half away so I'm, i am going to try to get as much tire on the back as i can keep it looking aesthetically correct but but subtly different right so um fiberglass fender provided a significant uh front section I can't imagine a running board being being down that low, but you know I'll have to trim those because I'm tucking everything up, and of course the car is sitting lower. And we played with ideas on the grill. You know these will be individual laser cut um, pieces. I'm pretty confident I'll do a vertical a vertical grill. But, you know, I'm going to have to deal with this area in here. So I'm thinking about that, and, you know, it's even possible that I could customize that fan a little bit. But, um, but I, you know, I certainly can make it work, but I'm just trying to generate ideas as much as I can. Very happy with how the day went. Um, the angles are great. Uh, the view is the view is great because those that uh, body line right here will continue up and then it, it'll bury to zero like like the 37 you know that's what they did because it's an overlap this section overlaps the hood side so we are making progress guys thanks for watching though really appreciate it I really do.